wants to take you deeper than the challenges that are in your life. So you understand exactly why Jesus is in you and why you are in Christ. Welcome to a dynamic and life transforming program impacting generations with the word of God. Christ has been made our wisdom. He's Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. He's not just the power without the wisdom and it cannot be complete to be wisdom without the power because the wisdom of God evokes the power of God on your life. Here is Fenero Make Manners with Apostle Grace Rebelli. You'll open with me in the Psalms 82. Psalms 82 verses 5. Psalms uh, chapter 82 verses 5. The Bible says they know not neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said that ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Okay? If you have been a reader of the word for quite some time, I believe that this uh, portion of scripture resonates with you. And tonight I feel that the Lord has impressed on my heart to really take some time and help us understand what this scripture really means. Okay? Because I believe that one of the biggest deceptions that has lured the church into some of the biggest bondage that I've seen in human history in the faith, in the Christendom, is the crisis that we go through in identifying ourselves, uh, an identity crisis as, as children of God. Uh, it's not that we are not convinced enough that we are children of God, but what does that identity define in the deepest sense of our nature, our aspirations, our dreams, our potential, our portion, our heritage, and our glory, okay? To not know who you really are in spite of the naming and, and, and the confirmation of who you are, to not really have the full account of who you are, it means to really be robbed of your potential. And there are many uh, believers across the world that do not really know who a child of God is. Firstly, the psalmist tries to give uh, an honest conviction concerning where the children of God are, okay? And he says uh, that there is a lacking of understanding. There is a lacking of revelation. There is a lacking of wisdom. And because of that, they walk on in darkness. And the word there really for darkness is translated also as ignorance okay because the absence of light is darkness and darkness is ignorance and because they are ignorant without understanding or wisdom he says because of that they're responsible for the foundations of the world being out of course the foundations of the world yes have been set out of course in you know severally okay but God is saying here that because of who they are, the children of God, they have a due responsibility in putting the course of the foundations of the world back to order anytime the enemy means for spoil. But because they don't have understanding, they don't have the wisdom and revelation of who they really are, they walk on in darkness. And for such, even though they are gods, and children of the most high because they possess the dna of god the bible says they fall they die like men and they fall like one of the princes they die like men and fall like one of the princes meaning that a child of god is not supposed to die like men die like the children of this world die you understand i'm not just talking about the guarantee of salvation I'm talking about the life that the child of God carries, even with a guarantee of salvation, that should not allow that person to die like the children of this world die, to fall like any of the princes. That means by reason of your identity in Christ, there's a definitive expectation of heaven of how you should live, of how you should die, of how you should exist in this world, but also the responsibility 
of the foundations of the earth are in your hands. What a power. Okay, and so today I am really taking time to help us understand just how much as children of God we have given, been given in potential, in ability, in glory, but translated as well into the responsibility and accountability that we owe to the things that are in it, the seen and unseen. Okay, I want to show you the potential, you know of a child of God before his father and what you are able to do with what God has given you and I believe that as I share these things your heart will be drawn deeper into just how much power is available for you to command the next move in your time in Jesus mighty name we have learned and I have shared times without number about dimensions of the spirit and I will uh, for a fact one day if given opportunity uh, to share with those that will allow uh, about the, some of these dimensions more clearly okay and I've touched so much about the fourth dimension of the spirit the redemption of time he says for redeem the time for the days are evil okay and I tell believers that if we do not know how to function in the timing of the spirit we can never change anything in the timings of the earth we shall move and live like men waiting morning and night on the predictions of the world and where the winds of this world may blow us that is not how so god has called the believer of course if you're a reader of the things of the world you'll understand that the signs uh, of an altered world uh, are revealed or shown in the evidence of things that have not or will not appear in their own timing so if you want, want to know that the world is altered you want to understand the sign that the world is changed or altered in a way you have to judge it on the things appearing in the time they're not supposed to appear or appearing later than the time they're supposed to appear okay so when we see discrepancies in the appearance in the manifestations of things against the time they are truly supposed to manifest then we design by the spirit that the world is altering or is altered and that means for example I'll give you a simple example that if you live in the tropics like I do in Africa we have definitive times of seasons where we expect the rains to fall okay and we know that in that time is a time of our planting because we expect the rains and so we plant our seeds and then we wait for those couple of months and then we reap harvests for food at home or even selling okay because we can tell the times but there are times the rains come late okay and because the rains come late they affect our budgets they affect our planning they affect our prospects that's an altered world there's something in that in the spirit realm that has changed or affected the tectonic plates albeit in the physical realm many people might not know but spiritually something has taken place okay and so when the rains come late then we plant late and you know yield late and because of that a lot of our maths our mathematics are frustrated because they affect our annual plans and food prices will change a bit because of the change of the season and sometimes the rains don't come as they should and that affects us too sometimes the dry spell is longer okay and that affects us too but leave the elements of the weather and go also in other aspects of human existence that the world is constantly being altered and altering according to elements seasons times periods you know years and days and deaths of course notwithstanding some of which can be explained scientifically okay you know the green effect and you know how we are conserving nature or not conserving it that all in respect because science is not supposed to be contradictory you know to the spiritual world but we still accept that the world can be altered like we can like seasons can be altered 
for, for of, of the weather other things too can be altered okay the business world can be altered okay like the agricultural world is altered so the 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 the, the ministry world the world of ministry can be altered for us who are ministers of the gospel certain things can happen in the spirit realm and change the trajectory of ministry like we know it the educational world can be altered and that can change the trajectory of education like we know it it can be changed history has proved that it has been changed before relationships between nations can be changed and because of that trade commitments change and because of that incomes change many things change in the spirit realm health the, the world uh, can can the, the the health can change you understand the realm of 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 of, of life human life touching health can change we are in such a time where people are dying more in record and number as we read these numbers across the world being buried and has happened since the beginning of the year something altered the normal way we understood the world and, and we have buried people by the hundreds of thousands and some have not even died of covid all right but we have been awakened and sensitive to the spirit of death in this period in human history like has not been in quite a long time okay and it's not bombs that are killing men it's not nuclear warhead it's not atomic uh, weaponry it is it's viruses that our eyes can't even see so something in the spirit realm has been altered something has changed and God is saying that the foundations of the world are out of course and he's saying that there's a responsibility of the body of Christ, of the children of God. If they have a certain understanding, if they have a certain revelation, if they have a certain wisdom, there's a way some of these things can be affected. And we start to see changes in the spirit realm. So the only challenge we're dealing with in the body of Christ, really, is understanding it is knowledge it is revelation and this is the thing that i intend to dig through as i go deeper to open your eyes to see the things you must see in the mighty name of jesus in the book of joshua the 10th chapter a story is given the children of israel are being led by this wonderful great leader and glory upon glory in the defeat of AI and the rest of them and great things are happening in the time of, of, of Israel's history and before we know that the Amorites start to sense that there is something phenomenal that is happening with the children of Israel which to us who understand the word was a fulfillment of divine promise no weapon fashioned against the children of God shall prosper. Any tongue that is raised against them shall be held. They shall condemn or shall be held in judgment. Their righteousness is of me. You see, God has promised the fulfillment of the victory of the children of Israel from times ages. Of course, they have gone off the course sometimes and gone the way God has not called them. But it has always been an indelible plan in God. To give big victory to the children of God always. And so through the hand of Joshua, we see a consistent victory. And now one time, these kings of the Amorites, I believe there could have been five of them. They gather together and say, why don't we once and for all, you know, put together our troops and go and attack this Joshua fellow in Israel once and for all and take them off the face of the earth. Before we know it, the Amorites come in attacking them. And when they do, the scriptures tell us that God discomfited them. Okay? 
he put them out of order and they got into a level of insecurity and confusion and before we know that the children of Israel greatly slaughtered the Amorites and when they did the time comes where they were running out of time to avenge this God-given victory because remember if you read earlier Joshua had sought the mind of God and he asked what becomes of these Amorites and God tells him you know what go in my strength go in my power you shall have the victory and so he marches on triumphantly and he knows the victory is assured the word of God has been sent and so the war ensues like I said the Amorites are greatly defeated and Joshua runs out of time and when he does in the 12th verse the Bible says then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel and he said in the sight of Israel son stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon and the sun stood still and the Bible says and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies and that is why Joshua said is it not written in the book of Jasher so the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down until about a whole day okay and there was no day the Bible says like that before it or after it that the Lord God hearkened unto the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel the Lord fought for Israel in this story we see that when it comes to Joshua it wasn't a divine inspiration it wasn't a prophetic vision that comes to him to tell him you know what the sun is gonna stop it's not God telling Joshua what he's going to do no it is God giving victory by right to the children of Israel, to the children of Israel by the leading of Joshua and because of that Joshua says because you've given us the power to execute this victory by divine wisdom epignosis the execution of an action beholding the end in sight but with the liberties of the spirit to know how to execute this because the, the the right has been given the liberty to go has been given the grace and blessing has been given epignosis the wisdom of God that allows a man to consider the mode of action in the victory because he beholds the end it's on the man of God because he's anointed by God and so he makes the choice instead of us chasing these guys for days and nights the Bible says he speaks to God and then he turns to the son before Israel and he tells the son Sun stand still at Gibeon and moon stand in the valley of Ajalon and the sun and moon stood still the Bible says the sun stood still for close to a day close to 24 hours because the man of God had to arrest and fully avenge the destiny of Israel and the Bible said God had the audacity to listen to a man's prayer to the level where the timing of the spirit the 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 the, the, the the, the, the weather and the elements were changed and arrested because of a man's prayer because a man made a prayer to God what a thought there's somebody listening to me you're believing God for a job and you have a posterity of men that affected the timing of the spirit and paused the sun and the moon and these creations respond because God knew who he was dealing with and this man that I'm telling you about was in a lesser covenant and order than you are in the New Testament dispensation hallelujah glory to God God hearkened to the voice of a man he hearkened to the voice of a man and the sun stood still the moon stood still for 24 hours close to 24 hours because God had given him right so he had the definitive authority to execute the victory given him as the liberties of the spirit in him could relate with him so he committed to stop wild time 
we, we don't know what that did to the rest of the world i don't know what people who are living on the other side of the world who had not known what was happening okay uh, at, at gibeon what was happening in between between joshua and the children of israel against the Amorites? i don't know whether the other people don't know what was happening Perhaps they just saw the sun stand still and they're wondering what is happening? Why, why is this affecting you? What? Who did this? But there was a prayer of a man. Oh, don't you think that those other people as well had plans? Yes, they did have plans. They had projected their day as usual. They knew that the earth is like that. It's night and day. It, it has been like that from the creation of the world. But God extended time for the victor of Israel. I wish some of you understand what God is willing to do because you're his own. Joshua was a man of God. The New Testament believer is more than just a child, a man of God, but he is a child of God. He is a technon of God, a beloved seed of God hallelujah hallelujah what a power a story is given in second kings chapter 20 and that's and it's about a fellow called hezekiah hezekiah was going about his business and a prophet comes to him isaiah and God tells the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, go and tell Hezekiah to set his house in order for he is going to die. He will die and not leave. So the Bible tells us when Hezekiah heard this news, he turned his face to the wall and prayed. He prayed and he says, oh God, you have seen my life, how I have walked before you with a pure heart and in truth I've done all this good in your sight and the Bible says and Hezekiah wept a soul and as he was weeping it came to pass that as Isaiah had gone out and had reached into the middle of the court the Lord comes to as Isaiah and tells him turn and go back to that fellow for I have heard his prayer and I want you to tell him that I will heal him i have had his tears that i'm going to heal him and uh, on the third day he shall go up to the house of the lord so true to form isaiah comes to hezekiah he tells him you know what god has said he shall deliver thee and he shall give you another 15 years and not only that he shall give uh, you the victory and grace preservation from the hand of the assyrian he will defend your city for your sake god did not only grant this man 15 years more for life but you also guaranteed the preservation of that man's life in peace in peace because God is not the one who wants to give you a marriage and it's frustrating you he doesn't want to give you a business and it's failing he's not the God who wants to give you a child and that child is to die in drugs he's not the God who is to give you uh, a ministry for that ministry to hit shipwreck he not only gives you the life and ability to do a thing but he also sends the eternal graces for that craft that creation that ministry that responsibility to have a hedge and a wall to have a preservation that is only of God that is the way of God that is the giving of God. It's a full circle thing. It's a fulfillment of the duality of effect. I bless the man alongside with the creation. I give him not only the ability to do, but I preserve the thing that he's supposed to do. I, I don't just give him the, the, the marriage, but I preserve the marriage as well. I don't just give him the business, but I preserve the business as well. I don't just give him the ministry, but I preserve the ministry as well. I don't just give him the mind and wisdom. I preserve the body as well. It's a duality of effect. And I have a summary on that. If the Lord will, I'll probably teach it maybe on Sunday because there's something deep about that. So anyway, God promises this fellow. And in the eighth verse of 2 Kings chapter 20, Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, Yes, I have heard that God has spoken to heal me. 
and that I shall go out and serve him. But, he said, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? He's asking for a sign. Okay? And Isaiah said, this sign thou shall have of the Lord. The Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. The Bible says, shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? What do you wish? God is going to give you the sign that you need. But what do you want? Do you want the sun to go down 10, I mean to go forward 10 degrees or do you want the sun to go backwards 10 degrees what do you want what do you really want if i can read it for you uh, in in the amplified and uh, sorry in the message version isaiah says do you want the shadow to advance 10 degrees uh, to advance 10 degrees on the sundial or go back 10 degrees it tells him you choose you choose and if i'll continue the message version hezekiah said it would be easy to make the sun advance 10 degrees. Why? Because the sun advances. It doesn't go backward. It just advances. It rises and sets. It rises and sets. It goes forward. So, uh, as Hezekiah says, it's, it's easy for the sun to, to go its normal way. It's easy for time to define itself its normal way. It's easy for the clock to go forward, even though it would go forward 10 seconds quicker than it is supposed to, but still we know that the clock goes forward, all right? So Hezekiah says in verses 11, so I, um, he says it would be, in verses 10, he says it would be easy to make the sun shadow advance 10 degrees. He says, make it go backward 10 degrees make time go backward 10 degrees on the sundial so isaiah called out in prayer to god and the shadow went back 10 degrees on ahaz's sundial on ahaz's sundial shortly and and and, and i want you to note this that when the sun goes backward 10 degrees for anybody that is not in hezekiah's circle they would never understand what has happened. All they will remember is that something has happened about the timing, the usual timing, and we don't know exactly what that means or what that would imply. Probably the heathens would start to seek their gods to find out what has really happened. But the spiritual man, you and I that is listening to this story, we understand this. Again, like the event of Joshua, Isaiah makes a prayer and he says we know for certain that you have confirmed the healing of this man and the guarantee that on the third day he'll go to the temple but because your servant needs a sign again I want you to notice he has asked that the sun move 10 degrees backward 10 degrees backward according to Ahaz's sundial and what does the Bible say? The Bible says the sun moved 10 degrees backward and God had the prayer of Isaiah. Why? Because it was prayed in the liberties of the spirit that guaranteed the promise of God when he said to the man that I shall heal thee and you shall go up the temple on the third day. Now, let me, let me emphasize some before I, I, I go to the end of this. That for every promise, for every word God has spoken upon your life, there is a liberty of the spirit that is availed. And that by the wisdom of God, the pignosis, the, act, the determining of the action because you behold the end in sight, by the wisdom of the pignosis, you can by prayer command or speak and change an earthly element in that liberty 
because the foundations of the earth are subject to you as a child of God it's the very reality with which Christ speaks in Matthew and he says you shall speak to a mountain a mountain a mountain is a physical feature steadfast studied and established it is a, it's strong it's hemmed and hedged but he said that if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed he said you shall say unto this mountain not just literal or figurative or psychological of which that would be true as well but we're even talking about even a physical mountain he says you shall say to it be thou removed hence to yonder place and the bible says and it shall remove and he says and nothing shall be impossible to you we're talking about changing the topography of a place changing the flow of an ocean changing the direction of winds propelling the courses of rivers speaking to the weather and commanding it to work a certain way in the space of those liberties and God is saying that it is possible with a child of God it's possible with a child of God now what the eyes of faith see what the mystery of faith impresses on our vision is an amazing reality that without that vision it is impossible for God to fully give you for you to fully comprehend the potency in your spirit the ability that you have before God in the identity as a child of God so when we talk about this faith as small as a mustard a, a, a mustard seed literally what he's saying he's talking about the vision that sees a mustard seed and looks at this mustard seed bigger than even the mountain you're trying to move i don't know they understand what i'm saying because a mustard seed is a very small seed but it's not about the faith, the perception, the vision in your spirit that starts to look at this mustard seed bigger than the mountain you're moving. And for such, to move the mountain becomes a small thing. And to even think that that power is available for all who believe is an unfathomable thought. But yet it is true. That it is available for all who believe for all who believe I've been a reader of church history and that is no secret if you have followed this ministry for quite some time I teach church history in time Bible schools I can tell that the church every other day is advancing in the understanding of the mystery of faith and the things that our dispensation is able, able to believe able and I mean able to believe is way bigger than the dispensations and moves before again the church is moving every day from glory to glory from one level of anointing to the next level of anointing because the end purpose of God is that we will all come to the full stature, the measure, the fullness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, in Christ was the fullness of God bodily. He was a man that walked the surface of this earth with the fullness of God, the Godhead bodily. So all God could do was in a human body. He was the guarantee that it is possible to possess all God is and has in the body, in the human body, through the spirit, your human spirit. And this is not just holistically as the body of Christ. No, faith has always been a personal experience. It's the man believing his God. It's that spirit, that's the man's spirit connecting to the Holy Spirit. 
but your eyes have to see the things that we are sharing because I believe that where we're going as a body of Christ and a time that I feel is not far we are going to see some of the most remarkable expressions of faith that have never even been read even in the Bible that we read today before Christ is back remember the church is coming for is without spot nor wrinkle yes Satan comes in like a flag but I want you to see the other side of it where the Spirit of the Lord is lifting up a standard the prophet says that the Spirit still remains among you that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead still abides among you that same Spirit that worked with Elijah with Elisha with Jeremiah, with Isaiah, with Hezekiah and Joshua, that same spirit is still available in our lives. And as I know, as the church becomes more conventional and liberal and more susceptible to the way the world works and acceptable to the way the world teaches, I believe that there is a remnant by grace, a people by the Spirit of God that are being studied into the depth of these realities because these realities are the potential potential of our nature and the responsibilities thereof and because we carry those realities that responsibilities that potential because of the nature that we have in Jesus Christ we are not about to sit and see people walking out and believing and giving themselves over to die like men and fall as one of the princes even though their power is available within them the world is scared of a virus out there but I want to tell you the truth we are not scared of a virus we children of God at least and not scared or should not be scared of the virus the virus should be scared of us and is scared of us because we are light we are light so we pray for the world we will obey our leaders in the advice they give us but within us we're not obeying them because we fear to die no we are obeying them because they are our leaders greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world I say it again greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world yes the foundations of the world are out of course touching human health but because we are children of God, we are fixing it. We are fixing it. Not by power, not by might, but my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We have the spirit of God in us. We have the spirit of God within us. We have the anointing of God within us. That life in us, when it's put on the sick, they are healed. When we cast out devils in that name, the Bible says they flee. We've been praying for COVID cases, even in this ministry, and we've had people testifying, being healed of the same thing that is killing certain people across the world. I want to tell the world the good news that God is alive and that the answer is in believers, men who have the Holy Spirit. We are bold now than we have ever been that the answer that is troubling the world is with the Lord's anointed those that are watching me right now and listening in and beyond sickness so it is with every other aspect but the question is are you willing to believe God to that level are you ready to believe God for who you want what he has placed in the inside of you the Bible says in the book of Psalms uh, chapter 111 the sixth verse if you read from the amplified version the Bible says he has declared and shown to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations he this is the only way God can demonstrate the power of his works he has given us nations 
and these nations are not just to inherit land on those nations no but it is to take the due responsibility over the welfare of those nations over the peace of those nations over the tranquility of those nations over the 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 the, the, the wisdom of those nations over the joy and provisions of those nations and they are tucked up in the child of god's spirit god has given you the responsibility over your nation and that is how i know that because i'm in uganda covid will leave my nation i don't care what you believe this is what i believe that because i am a child of god i'm a man of god and i'm in this nation covid will leave our nation it doesn't matter what the world believes that's them to believe what they believe for okay but we have a faith because you're in this nation covid will flee because you're in this nation poverty will flee because you're in this nation corruption will not stand oh what about the earlier years leave those years now you have understanding the courses of this world are going to come back to order again because the church has a due responsibility and now more than ever before we believe it and understand it we're not going to cow back again like we've been and fearing oh what 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 no 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 we are fully persuaded and confident in the power and ability that has been given us by christ the nations are our responsibility and that is why the church should not go to the men of this world to ask for favors no we should go to the men of this world to give a solution to give an answer and if they don't see it fit that the church is an answer God is going to raise a standard where they have no choice but to believe and, 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 and confess with their own mouth that we cannot do this without you because you're children of God. The Bible says, Ten shall come and hold on your, on your cloth, on your lap, and say, Let us go with you, for we have heard that the Lord is with you. And the Bible says, And they shall come with all manner of language from nations. In one child of God has been placed the responsibility to stir nations back in order politically, financially, socially, etc. That is why I say this without apology. That more than ever before, we are praying for Christian believers in the offices that matter in our nations. If a man bows to anything that is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we will not believe in him. But if a man believes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that one we will pray for. Why? Because it's our responsibility. Let those who worship darkness worship it. For us, we shall worship the light of the glorious gospel. We shall worship the light of the glorious gospel. Why? Because the world is not going to continue going out of course when believers across the world are watching. No. We're going to take our responsibility. We know what to do. If God had Joshua and the sun stood still, if God had Isaiah and the sun went back 10 degrees on Ahaz's sundial, more than that, he is able to believe, to listen, to heed to the prayer of a believer in the changing of anything that is out of order and out of course. In anything that is out of order and out of course. And this we shall do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I'll call upon the choir as we come to the close of our service. I want to pray with somebody that is listening to me right now. I want to pray with you. I want to take time and just pray with you. If God had Joshua's prayer like you've heard, 
if God had Isaiah's prayer like you've heard, how much more, the Bible says, who is under a better covenant established on better promises? Better covenant, better promises. That's the ministry you've obtained through Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. He says, you shall decree a thing and it shall happen. The devil better prepare. Because more than ever before, the church of Jesus Christ is coming with a force that the world has never seen before. And now we might look as jokers, but in just a few weeks, a few months, and a few years, the world will understand that when a child of God prays, the foundations of this world can be brought into any order. The elements, the seasons, the weeks, the days, the, 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 the weather can change when a child of God prays. Now there's somebody watching me, you have issues in your family, you have issues in your finances, you have issues in your health. All that and more, God is going to answer. Now I beseech thee by God, from your heart with thanksgiving and faith toward God, raise your words right now to heaven and start to speak as a child of God, not as a survivor. I want you to speak as a child of God right now and pray. We decree and we declare in the name of Jesus that greater is he which is in us than he that is in the world. We decree and we declare in the name of Jesus that we carry the light of the glorious gospel. In him, Jesus, we live, move, and have our own being. And in that man was given a name that at the sound of that name every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And the Bible says, and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. We decree and we declare that coronavirus has no place in Uganda. It has no place in Africa. It has no place in Europe. It has no place in Asia. It has no place in this world. Regardless of what science is saying, we choose to believe God in the name of Jesus. And we come against it. We condemn it in the name of Jesus. And we decree and we declare that disease has no power in this nation, on this continent, and in the world in the mighty name of Jesus we rebuke and bind poverty out of our nations and out of our continents we rebuke and bind corruption out of our nations and out of our continents we refuse confusion we refuse perversion we refuse indifference we refuse wickedness we refuse and withstand all the powers of this world in the name of Jesus the principalities of this world are under our feet in the name of Jesus and we are seated in Christ for above all principalities and powers we are waiting for all our enemies to be made a footstool to be broken and defeated under the footstool in the name of Jesus Christ for we are 
above and not beneath the heads and not the tail we are more than conquerors through Christ which strengthens us and because we are here the world shall have order and because we are alive the world shall have peace our communities will have peace we come against and destroy all scavengering spirits all spirits of robbery in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and we declare that they shall be no more because we carry the life of God and because we live in these communities and in these nations we speak wisdom we speak understanding may the institutions of this world be aligned to the will and purposes of God that our sons and daughters will not go to high school and education just to educate the mind but that through that the gospel will have its precision and that the human heart shall be converted we decree and we declare that secularism will not reign in our dispensation because we are alive to believe God for this our children shall be preserved and taught of the of God and their peace shall be many we speak provision over our households we speak peace over our marriages we speak joy and victory over our businesses we speak a uh, advancement over our careers in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that God works in us more than ever before to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we dare to ask or think according to the working power that worketh in us mightily and we have faith and because we have faith nothing is impossible father give us leaders that come from you give us leaders that fear your name Give us leaders that will not bow to Baal. Give us leaders across the world that proclaim the name and honor the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we decree and we declare, raise men and women that will change the trajectory of our nations and the world at large in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever they are, you can, you can, you, 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 you design hearts. You, oh God, who such as the hearts of these men. God, deal with them according to their hearts because we cannot be able to discern with what we read and what we see but God you can deal with our leaders you can deal with our people because you know their hearts and change the hearts of those that you know need to be changed for those that have fallen and just need to be uplifted you know the hearts of the honest and sincere those are the ones we pray that you will put in our positions those positions of influence because the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation and we are a people that are believing for the righteousness of God to reign to shine over our nations and as they do oh God peace shall 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 shall, shall abide joy shall abide our nations will be exalted and reproach will be taken away from our people in the mighty name of Jesus truth shall prevail above deception light shall prevail above darkness your glory your peace shall reign above the deceptions and frustrations of the hour we thank you because you have heard and we wait to see things change before our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah the sick are healed of any manner of disease somebody you've had a, a problem with the left side of your arm and it begins from the shoulder God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus there's somebody you have an infection on your umbilical cord God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus somebody had an operation in your teeth but the operation was not done well and you were planning for another operation God is healing you cervical cancer you're leaving that woman's body in the name of Jesus Christ cysts are leaving in the name of Jesus Christ migraines are healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ oh sabrakatalapa provision is coming right now in the name of Jesus Christ oh satala broko telebo yezele balataka there's a young man called Peter you've been going to hospital they've been checking you but they don't know what's disturbing your body but you're constantly sick God is healing you right now in the mighty name of Jesus another young lady called Martha You've been sickly, you've had abdominal pains, low abdominal pains for about 
six months and you don't know why your abdomen has been paining Martha God heals you father we thank you for your word we thank you because you've had our prayer in Jesus mighty name amen 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 thank you for tuning in thank you for fellowshipping with me i hope to see you on sunday if you're there and you have not given your life to christ i want to give you an opportunity to receive jesus as your lord and savior you can only repeat these words with me say lord jesus i thank you because you died for me and was raised for my glory and tonight i receive you as my lord and savior amen if you've made that prayer, you're born again. Please go on the website on fanero.org slash salvation and, and just give me your story. We just want to hear from you, get your details so we can help you understand what it means to be born again. Or you can actually call us on our phone, on our phone lines on plus 256-200-999-405. I repeat, it's plus 256-200-999-405. I wait and I await to hear from you. I hope to see you. I hope to hear from you uh, very soon in the mighty name of Jesus. And he is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Narrow. Make Manifest.